Hey there guys. At this point I have made a couple different DIY parrot toys and a lot of you have really liked them but I have gotten questions about whether or not a certain item is going to be safe for your individual animal. And my general rule of thumb is just about everything can be made for a certain animal. Uh, it's just a question of what you need to do to do it safely. Uh, so the topic of this video is going to be scaling enrichment up or down for a change in size or species of animal. Uh, and then at the very end, I'm going to be applying that and making one of the toys that I have made, a DIY foraging donut for parrots, and scaling that up to the size to give dromedary camels. So if that is something you guys are interested in learning more about or watching, make sure you stick around because that's going to be coming up right <laughs> This is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. And today's video is going to be all about scaling the size of enrichment. Uh, a lot of people will see a particular item and think that it's not going to be safe to give their animal because it's the wrong size or it's listed for another animal. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and just talk about that. So the first thing is uh, you know, for zoo professionals, there aren't ready-made enrichment items. Uh, the vast majority of enrichment items they are going to use are going to be made items that are either inspired by something you see at a store, or they're going to be inspired by something that was given to another species. Uh, so for example, you may see something that's like a dog puzzle feeder, and that would be great, but it's not scaled to the appropriate size to give uh, a large hoofstock animal. So instead, you're going to have to build your own out of like a five gallon bucket and some PVC pipe. Uh, so if you are willing to be inventive, you can definitely scale enrichment items up or down to an appropriate animal. Uh, so when it comes to scaling or changing enrichment, if you see something that you really like for another animal and you want to use it for your animal, uh, there's just a couple of questions I'm going to have you ask yourself. The first one is, what is the purpose of this enrichment? Is it going to act on a behavior that my animal is going to naturally do? Because uh, not every animal is going to respond to enrichment, to the same enrichment item, the same way. Uh, so a good example of that is going to be something like uh, a browse pile. So the fancy definition of a browse pile is uh, a mound of branches, leaves, sticks, that has then been mixed with different produce items, uh, different seed, different types of fruit, food. Uh, the realistic definition of a browse pile is the animal keeper was tired of raking leaves that day. They didn't want to bag them all up. So they raked them up, threw some food in it, and called it enrichment. That kind of is how that happens. Uh, now, a browse pile like that, you know, a mound of leaves and sticks with different pieces of produce in it, uh, something like a ground bird, a turkey, a pheasant, a chicken, is going to think that's an absolutely amazing type of enrichment. Something like a parrot might be interested in it. The produce is interesting. There's obviously a desire to destroy things. But being on the ground, uh, some parrots aren't going to be as comfortable with that because on the ground is where you're at risk for predation. You know, bigger, clunkier parrots take a little bit longer to get up in the air to get away from a predator. So they may not be as comfortable with it. Uh, and then obviously something like a bird of prey is going to have no interest in a browse pile full of produce. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is, what is the purpose of this? Is this acting on something my animal will be interested in doing? Um, and if the answer to that is no, just go ahead and stop right there because it's not worth pursuing uh, you know, if your animal is not going to be interested in it, if it's not a natural behavior that your animal is going to do, uh, just stop working on it. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. The next question you need to ask yourself, and this is the big one, is how do I make this safe? Uh, so you need to check and see if the materials for that individual item are going to be safe for the animal in use. If not, how can you scale them up, into, up or down? You need to check on the toxicity of certain items. 
Uh, there are browse plants that I'll use for certain animals that aren't safe for others. Uh, for example, things like banana leaves. My parrots love banana leaves. Uh, things like my sheep and camels, they do not have banana leaves on their approved browse list because banana is very, very high in copper. The sheep and the camels can have a bit of a sensitivity to copper, so that's just something I want to avoid. So you want to check to make sure that whatever items you are using, whatever enrichment you are providing for your animals, is going to be safe. The third, probably the most fun aspect of this, is what is my animal going to do with this? How is my animal going to interact with this? And the only way you are going to know that is by observing your animal. So I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend anytime you give your animal a brand new enrichment item, you want to make sure that you are monitoring their interaction to make sure that they are interacting with it in a way that is safe. Every single animal is going to be different. So even if another animal of the exact same species has gotten that enrichment item a hundred times and has been perfectly fine a hundred times, that is not your animal. So when you give your animal a new item, please observe them. Uh, I would observe pretty closely the first few times that you give it to them. Uh, I would observe it moderately closely the next few times. So uh, for me, if it's an item that an animal has gotten a few times, say it's a day that I'm bleaching water bowls. Uh, I can go through and check on the animal every five to 10 minutes as I'm going through cleaning out water bowls, putting water bowls back. Uh, so they get, you know, sporadic observation. I would say that there is probably no point with an animal that I am ever completely convinced that nothing will go wrong. Uh, there is always, 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 even if you do everything right, even if the toy has been deemed completely safe, uh, it could be the one day that your animal has decided it is going to do something completely different. It could be the day that one piece of hardware fails. Um, so I would say still observe your animal, never completely trust any piece of enrichment. Um, better safe than sorry. Uh, but by observing your animal, you can help to avoid all of those issues. So what I am going to be building today is giant foraging donuts. I'm going to be building them for my camels. Now, the way that I put these together is going to be pretty much the exact same way that I build these for my parrots, but I am going to make them much, much larger. So let's go ahead and see how I am going to build those, and then you guys can get to see camels playing with giant enrichment donuts. All right, guys, so we are going to build this foraging donut very much the same way that we built the smaller one. We are just going to need to scale up the size of the materials. So the first thing I'm going to be using is an old feed sack uh, instead of a paper lunch bag. Now, I am much the same way, just going to cut off the very bottom of that sack. I want to make sure that I have uh, essentially a tube. And because this paper feed sack actually has multiple layers, I am going to be able to get several different foraging donuts out of this. Uh, so I am actually going to discard the outside with the printed paper, and I have two different lining pieces uh, that'll make two different foraging donuts, which is great because I have two different camels, so they are definitely going to appreciate that. Uh, now I'm going to do this the exact same way. I'll reach through, grab one side, and just pull it in on itself. The goal here is to create that bowl shape that we had before. Except before, while it was a little bit of a, a hand technique, you know, building this for a larger animal is more of a full body workout. Uh, and that's just sort of how that works out. So, once I get that inside, all the way up, you can see I have the start of our donut. So it's hollow in the center, uh, but I do have the entire round that I can fill with items. Now I'm not going to be filling this with shredded paper. Uh, that would take a significant, almost ridiculous amount of shredded paper. So instead I have some hay and we're just going to work the hay into the interior of this donut. Uh, and guys, I'm just building one on camera. I'm gonna build the other one the exact same way, uh, but I figure y'all don't want to stick around too much for that. You would rather see me put one of these together and then just see the animals interacting with it. 
So there you go. You can see I've got the hay in there. Now to up the reward factor of this, I have some chopped produce. Here I've got some apples, some carrots. Uh, you could add a little bit of your animal's pelleted diet. Uh, you could add things like air popped popcorn. Uh, it really is going to depend what kind of animal you are giving this to, uh, but all of those are going to be approved enrichment items for my animals. Uh, in fact, for my camels, if I wanted to make this really, really special, not something that I gave them every day, but maybe something I gave them for Christmas or a special event, I could include things like a handful of marshmallows in there. Uh, again, that's going to be approved by their vet. You just want to make sure that what you're giving them is healthy and safe for that animal. Now, once I have it full, uh, and as you can see, this big donut is going to be able to hold a lot more. I'm just going to go through and crimp down the edges. And ta-da! We have built a foraging donut. I do need to say thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Red Bird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks! Mm -hmm.